Guyana, the only English-speaking country in South America, fertile and rich in natural resources, with almost perfect weather conditions for agriculture, manufacturing, and so much more. Lending itself to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and the International Fund for Agricultural Development, facilitated by Procacer and the Government of Guyana through the Ministry of Agriculture and the Presidential Advisor on Youth Empowerment to execute a project in rural youth employment via a learning route. The Learning Ruth is a methodology that promotes knowledge exchange between the potential and successful entrepreneurs. A mixture of youths from organizations across the country came together on a journey towards knowledge and inspiration. My expectations for the Guyana Learning Road would be to gain a wealth of knowledge, to share my experience as a young entrepreneur, to maybe create possible partners and to just have fun and to let the world know about my business, the pharmacy. My expectation of this learning route is basically to gain knowledge from the case study we are about to visit and also from the participants of the, pro um, the program and also to share the knowledge that I have with them. The learning route began with interactive sessions with panels comprised of resource persons from the private sector, government agencies and lending institutions of Guyana for a better understanding of the opportunities available. And I trust that your stay here and your visit to the various um, sites during the next couple of days will be one where you will be able to Open, it will open your ideas and you will be able to see how things are being done in different parts of the country. There's a lot of opportunities for you on the local market to sell things. And we are not capitalizing on that. Contracts with hotels, contracts with guest houses, contracts with restaurants, etc. Training at the School of Agriculture and elsewhere at the University of Guyana, these are two institutions which I think could set you on career paths, either to being an employer in your own right or to being employed in a technical capacity. The session intensified as the president of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Vishnu Dorga, shared his vast wealth of knowledge with the participants. A lot of business is done by meeting each other. I'm right? hoping that by the time you guys have met each other this morning, some business should have happened from that. You should have learned from each other. You should have made contacts that allow you to uh, call each other and maybe even do business with each other. Young people coming out from all different areas, and farming alone, something, bakery and so, gaining this experience, they can go improve themselves just like they need some sort of assistance. So they should see like, if not a grant, you could get this money 
for expand your business and then pay it back at the local as as they mentioned about the six percent loan too but when you go in the bank the bank does give you all different sort of thing for finance as a young people you can't find those things so if you're not getting no assistance like that you're going to be the same way you have today you can just gain the experience about what you could do with it if you're not getting the assistance so some of the opportunities of partnership with ipad we have loans that especially geared towards youth that you don't have to have a have any sort of collateral you just need a guarantor apart from ipad we also have the entrepreneurial development center which offers professional qualifications of a variety of professional qualifications uh, business studies project management legal studies resources hum human resources development marketing and office management we at gpt we want to encourage you to take advantage of all the assistance that you're receiving and training and as was said before, be committed to making your venture a success. We can assist you with acquiring a portion of land or even with land preparation. We know that costs a lot. We can assist, to assist you financially to cultivate the land, maybe acquire seeds, whatever you need, fertilizer to plant your uh, crop. We can also assist with purchasing of equipment and machinery to assist you. Participants then bonded over a mini exhibition of their products where they shared ideas and experiences. We can't get to exporting if we can't win the war on our own supermarket shelves. If nobody picks you on our own supermarket shelves, it's unlikely they're going to pick you when you're in a supermarket in, in Trinidad, Barbados, or in the U.S. Um, and those of you who are interested in agro-processing, produce products which are up to a standard that the consumer can say, well, I feel safe enough to consume this product. Day two commenced the process of visiting established young entrepreneurs in rural Guyana, where the participants interact and garnered valuable knowledge. Their first stop was at Cane Grove on the east coast of Damarara, where they visited Kevon's farm. This is Kevon Kenarn, our Hello. first uh, visit to, for today. So Kevon has a, a backyard garden with shade houses and hydroponic garden. This young entrepreneur started farming with knowledge from the internet and has been very successful in his experiments with different soil amendments and crops. A lot of my stuff I get um, from the internet. Research, um, I would ask other agricultural professionals like Anne here and so on. And you know, conversation, uh, seek advice from other farmers and so on. But the main source of my information is uh, Google and so on. 26-year-old Kevon Kennard has erected a shade house and a hydroponic garden where he grows a wide range of organic vegetables, herbs and spices. The group subsequently made their way to Region 6 where they met with several young entrepreneurs who were able to impart a wealth of knowledge with the eager participants. Meet Shemeniel Adams a young farmer who took up farming as a career after being a recipient of two sky courses as she explained the soil moisture in her hydroponic farm. The soil in here is basically um, white sand and paddy shell. And it's easy because with the paddy shell and the um, white sand, it's less um, weeds because it's paddy shell, you won't have weeds among this. And the boxes, I don't know if you can see, but the boxes have holes, some small holes. That's for proper drainage. Because if the water sits at the bottom, sometimes there is, um, there is one of the mixed inside, it can actually get to the plants and eventually the plants can wither. The, the, the amount of salt content, it can cause the plants damage. Naomi Narain and her father, a team from East Burbese, being the only local manufacturer of chow mein and noodles in East Burbese. Her desire for such business derived from her dad, who was into chow mein production for about eight years. And it's the only manufacturer process in Region 5, Region 6, one of the largest milk on the East Coast. They don't need. I run 25 backlog and then the same in the Despite the many challenges, 
Naomi and her dad are very optimistic. They recently added whole wheat chow mein to their line of products as they look for ways of developing and marketing their products. The next visit on the Burbies leg of the learning route was Romario Gomes, who specialized in traditional snack production and distribution. Operating out of a small outdoor kitchen on a wood-burning stove, Romario was able to build a name for himself, being one of the leading supplier of tasty snacks in supermarkets and retail outlets countrywide. His operation was basically shut down for the day because of the heavy downpour of rain. Guyana is the home to Amazon Caribbean Guyana Limited, Amcar, a successful Hearts of Palm exporter and was the next stop on the learning route. At Amcar, the participants learned about the exporting process of the organic Hearts of Palm and some of the challenges the company faced in ensuring its production process remains environmentally friendly and coexisting in harmony with the local communities. The next stop of the learning route was Surama Eco Lodge, located in North Rupununi Region 9. Surama has developed an intricate management system where they accommodate visitors who are primarily interested in ecotourism using a rotating local labor force and the lure of an authentic cultural experience. The final stop of the learning route was at the Blue Flame Women's Group, located in Hosororo Region 1, and is one of the several women's groups which form a part of a network of women's groups that fall under the umbrella Women's Agro Processors Development Network. With a foundation in Cocoa Beans, BFWG soon diversified into the Kasrib, cassava bread and coffee bean market. Blue Flame has partnered with several organizations in the private and public sector in an effort to develop a successful agro-processing business enabled by varying social, organizational and entrepreneurial factors. The uniqueness of the learning route sets it apart from the common field trip. On the learning route, participants adapt and generate their innovation plans from what was seen and experienced. At the end of their extensive visit to the various host cases, the participants met for an informative innovation fair where they were able to demonstrate all the knowledge they gleaned from their experiences and observations. The learning route concluded with a simple closing ceremony where the participants were awarded certificates of participation. What we are hoping is that out of this will really come success. Not tomorrow, but perhaps another year, two years from now. We can perhaps do a trace on each of you and see where you have come, rather than perhaps just have this as an exercise in futility.